My name is Bonnie Ayotte. I've been an artist, probably started selling work before I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know what it's like to not be an artist. I'm classically trained, so I was born to a musician father and an artist mother. So um, they, they didn't pursue it, they were sort of hobby level. My dad actually made some money at it, but pretty level headed, level headed musician. But anyway, um, I could not not. It has always owned me. Um, like I said, I don't know what it's like to not be, so I have pursued it my entire life. Good start. What medium? What did you draw? Did, um, what did you do? Whatever, whatever. I would finish my mom's painting. So my mom would okay. start a painting, and I would I would sneak in there when she wasn't looking, and I would see if I could sneak some stuff in. And she never actually noticed that I was amending her paintings. To the, I don't think to this day she knows that I did that. Every medium that I could find, from sewing, drawing, painting, sculpture, clay work, um, macrame, whatever was hit. Wow hip and in, yeah. I grabbed on and I played with it. Making, I, I remember, you know, family goes to the lake for the summer and everybody's off playing and fishing and making sand castles and I was building marionettes. Yeah. Oh. Right? So it was never really normal. Okay. Creativity is just oozing out of... Can't every, stop it. Yeah. Can't perfect. stop it. They had no idea what to do this with me in school. This is organic. We're looking at something authentic, genuine. Yeah, culmination of everything that I did growing up. Yeah. 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 From my combination of, uh, well, I, I built the, first of all, I built the set that all this is on because I spent some time in theater. I also built furniture, so my set is, is a, a line of furniture <laughs> that I may one day kind of get to. I've made a friend with somebody who has sheep, so now I get hold of the raw fleece and I, um, I'll spin it, uh, cart it, wash it, knit it, weave it, whatever is needed. So a lot of the props that you see in, a in Renaissance the, woman. The, everything in, other than the baby, I don't, yeah. don't want to make the baby. Um, but I make almost everything in the imagery, and that's where the rich texture is wow. coming from. Wow. Yes. So, so the it's baby amazing. is a skill. The texture but, is unbelievable. Thank you. Yeah. It's wool and wood, metal. Rust, rusty. I have a rusty old tar bucket. It's one of my favorite props. Yeah. Which Just is unlikely next to a newborn, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the colors are just stunning. Thank you. And uh, they're, they're a little eerie, okay. so quiet. <laughs> and babies are usually no, I know. You know, effervescent and bubbling. And, yes. Uh, you, you've captured a moment that is uh, hard for anyone to see, except, you know, parents. Well, there is a bit of a trick. There is a bit of a trick. Um, is this I, a secret you're going to share about? I can secret? because uh, because why not? Sure, makes the world a better place. I shoot 3D ultrasound as well, so I photograph, photograph, sonograph the ends up a photo in the end, in effect, babies before they're born. So I know what they look like in the womb. How do you do that? I have an ultrasound machine and I have a studio and I bring women in and their families and I project it onto a great big screen TV and they meet their babies before they're born. That's amazing. I was in psychology for a while and I needed a way to build family because I get tired of helping them divorce. So this was my response and my rebellion to that 
was to start doing, the, well, th it was an accident. It was an accident. It was either, I had the machine, either I learned how to do it, read the manual, or I had to shut it down. So, so I read the manual. <laughs> That's a good idea. It is a medical <laughs> piece of equipment. <laughs> do you have to be licensed to do this? Um, no, the tr well, I mean, to do it medically, yes, but to do it for keepsake purposes, no. And of course, I found the woman that wrote the software for the machines, and I said, okay. I need you to train me. So I overpaid her. and. The rest is history. So I mean, it's not totally foreign as a counselor, and and I'm trained in in, in indigenous medicine. So to be in a medical like genre was not all that weird. You know, the fact that I fell into it by accident is a part that I find yeah. strange. Oh, that's pretty so, interesting. So yeah, I see the babies before they're born. Yeah. So I know how they lie in wow. there when they're all cozied up in their favorite place to be. So they're not hungry, they're not in pain. It's a soft, warm environment with consistent temperature. They're constantly cradled and held. They're actually quite content in there. Yeah. What do you photograph? Do you photograph a screen or do you take an electronic feed? I figured out through my gaming sons how to get from the ultrasound to a computer video capture it like a camera and get it up on the TV. Excellent. So there's no loss of anything. It's just going straight from the diode or whatever it was. Yep. Nice. Yep. So I was the, capturing them on the way What kind of resolutions so. can you use? They're small. Like the, the 3D is small and, and 3D is creepy on the best of days. Okay. So my job is to make it as least creepy as possible. So, you know, you, you kind of have right. to know what you're doing, I guess. Sure. Helps to read the manual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looking at a baby in a womb is, it's, for me, it's just hard to see. Somebody can say, well, that's its nose in here. Really? So the reason that's coming from a medical background right. with the machine set for viewing medically. My machine is set differently and my training is differently. So I shoot in such a way that you can totally see what uh -huh. you're looking at. Okay, so you right? see silhouettes of, of body you, No, skull. not silhouettes. Not you so. see black and white or, you know, kind okay. of sepia tone images. And Interesting. Other than there's noise in the image, in other words, bits and parts of other things that are hard to recognize. Like, for example, if you wanted me to determine the gender of your child, you would tell me. That's how I shoot. Okay. I shoot so that, you, so that the, the mind recognizes what it's looking at. So it's completely different. Medical texts can't shoot the way that I, right. I do. They just, their head just doesn't go there. Wow, this is so interesting, Bonnie. You've taken a a medical tool, a tool designed for medicine and turn it into an art form. By accident, yes. By, but, no, <laughs> not by accident. That's it's genius. Some part of me knew. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the what secret it is to, to be an artist though, isn't it? It's it's to use yeah, your tools exactly. not in the way that they're expected. It's it's to use light in a different way. And that might can't follow a recipe, so it's inevitable. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know how to yeah. Stay within the line. I think a lot of artists, a lot of us aren't like that. That's probably one of the commonalities that we have, right? Mm -hmm. We tend to think that way. And yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's with the newborn. I mean, that's kind of this, the sequence of technical events. So how did I end up shooting newborns? But how do I yeah. get them? Your question was about how do I get them calm and quiet? And yeah, and they're so peaceful moment. and quiet and uh, sometimes a little eerie. And But there's some, Little that has a little happier face, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I guess that's just the baby. But uh, how do you do it? How do you calm them? Well, I mimic what I see in the womb. So when I, when you get into newborn photography as a genre, there's a series of poses that you learn how to do, and they have names. And so I went along and I started learning the poses, but the babies were always unhappy, and the end result I was never. And, I, and so this wasn't a conscious, it was kind of after the fact that I looked back and realized what it was that I was doing. And so I got frustrated with trying to do what I was supposed to do, and I started doing, you know, your, your plan B, your fallback, when you, nothing's working, and so you try something different. And, and one day I realized that the, the baby's bodies have a, the signature, they carry the signature of how they were in the womb if you get them under about 15 days. <laughs> so what I do when I get the babies, I get them in my lap and I play with their little legs and their feet and I, I lay them how they fit back together into that egg form because their bones are actually bent into that form for a little while. 
right? And once I get them into that position and I bind them up so that they can't move. Swaddled. They're swaddled, but they're not just, just swaddled. They're swaddled in the position they were in the womb. Okay. So my womb poses, which everybody's trying to emulate, not, not emulate me, but they're trying, in their posing, they're trying to emulate the womb, uh -huh. actually model what's in the womb, not somebody's conception of it. So once I find the position of the baby, and they're in, a, in an environment that is Bikram Yoga hot, it's about 83 degrees in there, so I'm sweating like crazy. Okay. And plus, I absolutely love babies from, it's just, it's, yeah, I, I'm in my element, let's just say that. So getting them quiet is about creating an environment that's very much like what they're used to being in. And once I find that, they zonk. And all the parents want me to come home with them. So you're telling me that we're, we're sitting surrounded by your images on the walls and all of these babies look like they're sleeping. But when they came to you, they were awake. Mm -hmm. They were awake and they were placed in your arms awake. Yep. And then you did this to them. Mm -hmm. See, I envisioned that the mothers smuggled them in and the mothers and fathers smuggled them in. They were sleeping in a bassinet. No. Quietly gave them to you. Here. No, this is usually happening. screaming by the time I get them, because I've had them keep the babies awake, right? So they come in with a frustrated, hungry baby who's cold and irritable, and then I make the moms feed them till they're milk drunk, so that helps. Of course, yeah. So I want a, I want a topped good... up baby. You know, I, my oldest is now 30. I've been a mom for 30 years, and I was mom-like before that. When I saw your stuff, I went, uh, uh, and Getty's on on steroids, on, on just beautiful rainbows, on like taking it to a completely different plane. So that's Edge. the fine arts background. That's yeah. the classical training. Rembrandt, yeah. Michelangelo, yeah. Da Vinci. She's postcard, your mural. You know? Yeah, a lot of people yeah. ask me, are these paintings or photographs? I'm not quite sure, which is exactly yeah. the effect I wanted, but I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. It's an accident. Right, which I think is partly part of the charm of them when you're trying, to, which the other stuff I was trying to do and I was so, it was just to me empty in the end yeah. and dispensable, right? These are largely accidental, but, but not, like, I would say probably a lot less consciously done. A lot of it is feeding in from a lifetime of drawing it painting and understanding classical right. art and understanding light with the medical background, understanding people, the psychology background. I wanted to photograph the strength of the babies, not these, they're not these fragile little little things. They're demon spawn about 15 months from now. Like how do, how do they go from that sweet little thing on a pink blanket? The lighting style comes, it's Rembrandt style light. I see that, that's Rembrandt Predominantly. Style. Yeah, yeah, right? not, Single not, source. Right, not perfectly, but pr predominantly. Yeah. Yeah. Predominantly. So yeah. the background, I don't really, I'm not interested in the background. Yeah. So I, but I need something there. Yeah. So I fill it full of texture. I will light it. It's quite blurry. Heavy use of bokeh, so short lens kind of ideas. Oh. Okay. And the background short, is a there. A short lens? Okay. Oh. Yeah, uh, 35. Okay. Um, so you're close, you're right up? Mm, Pretty close, no? Sometimes. A Sometimes I'm right in there. Yeah, within within five feet. Yeah. Coming okay. in and out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so I, I want the background there, but it's not really so I'm not really calling attention to that. So it's essentially a dark room with yeah. my single source light. And I don't like to fast. Okay. And you don't have all that much control with the newborn. So right. yeah. sometimes I just take what I get and then in in post I will now hand paint them to get the lighting effect that you're seeing. Nice. So you you have to be careful not to overdo it, but right. I'm actually modeling the lights and the darks after the fact, and that's the classical training. Yeah. Being a photographer with an actual fine arts background, I learned how to draw. It's a thing that I mastered, the pencil, black and white, right? So that is underscoring, and plus the anatomy background, that's all feeding into what I'm doing that's not coming out of you have to kind of you have to have gone through all the crap I've been through right. to get here it's yeah. a culmination of so many things right.
And I think that that is what people are seeing because it's just babies on, you know, I make all of my props, I build the sets, I, the hats that are, they're wearing, I made those. Uh, from, from sheep, so I started with sheep, <laughs> I don't own the sheep, I borrow the sheep. I get the fur from the sheep, right, the wool, and the fleeces, and I go from there, and the wool becomes, I think I have 15 different things that the wool can become that are all in these images, depending on all you know, the layering okay. and yeah. colors, and I don't like dyes, I don't like bright colors, so it would be, it's difficult to, to mimic what I do, um, because if you don't understand form, and you don't understand light, you don't know right. how to model yeah. with tone, you can't do this. Yeah, let's let's shift gears for a little mm -hmm. bit. Let's move out of the art world okay. and into um, this is this is fine art. How do you how do you find an audience for it? Where or, or have you had an opportunity to take this type of work to museums or galleries, or are you interested in doing that? For the market that I'm in. There's a, there's a heavy draw because the images are not simple. You can't just flip through them. Right. You've got to stop and, and ponder this because yes. they're odd. I, I, I all fine art needs a sense of tension. Mm -hmm. It needs that. It has to have the, the build up, you know, mm -hmm. the release, the tension and the release, and then, yep. and then the fade away. And you're, that's why, the, I, that's what I see in almost every one of these. I don't see it in all of them. But in some of them, it's overwhelming. You know that triad mm -hmm. of, of that release, build up and release. Um, is because they're not immediately understood. Yeah, they're not. They're simple from a complex standpoint, but they're they're complex in terms of their construction. Yeah, multiple things layered together yeah. that lead to that. So it pulls them out of the fine art photography genre, leaves them in the fine art genre. But a weird subject, you know, the young artists' struggles between the love of what they want to do and this demand to earn, this marketing piece, mm -hmm. right? And we, I know for myself, I layered on and layered on and layered on. How did I get to learn all these complex things because I was trying to figure out money? And at this point, I'm so bored of that. I really don't care anymore. I do absolutely what I love to do. The rest be damned. I was raised in contrast to a sister. Okay? So my mother and I did not bond, and my sister and my mother did. Uh. When I was about three, in the worst timing, my mother was having a bad day and told me that nobody loved me and never would, and I believed her. And as a three-year-old, you don't stop and think about that. Mother is God. So I just took it on, right. and off I went in life. Yeah. Fast forward, I'm, I'm looking at a life struggling as an artist. I mean, of, of all the people to not have any belief in themselves and to be an artist, it, it can't happen, right? Yet somehow the gifting was sneaking through and I was pulling things off as this, in my mind, hated person. Like what a, what a dichotomy, yeah, right? Yeah. So I looked at my life and what I wanted and I looked at my sister's life and what she wanted and here this person who didn't pay a whole lot of attention to life was pulling off everything she wanted to do and here I am, the straight A student and all this schooling and trying so hard and everything else and I feel like an utter failure. And I, I did a double master's in counseling psychology, discovered this thing in the field called attachment, and the answer was sitting right there. The difference between my sister and me was she grew up knowing she was loved. I grew up feeling forsaken. Now I understand that the plight of the world, what every, all, everybody's behavior and all the craziness that's going on out there, is because in us, we need to feel cherished. When you feel forsaken, you act like a butt. So for me, I want you to love these babies. So they don't feel like I felt growing up. And I'm still not sure I can overcome it. You're doing it. 
well, if I can pass it on, I mean, I hope somewhere in my life I get to actually feel cherished because I feel forsaken, but I keep going anyway. So there's never not an element of pain, ever. You'd think that it's women that like the newborn images, right? But my work attracts men, men to babies. Really? That doesn't make sense, wow. really, but the men... Is this men, a sign of the times? I, I don't know. I mean, there's a movement to... to the father, fathering is becoming really important again. Yeah. But the men, men being so attracted to babies oh. is a really odd kind of thing. Oh, but yeah. through this work, somehow... Yeah, I wonder why. I'd have, have, to, I'd have to play with that, that a little while. more. But yeah, you just called my attention to it now when you oh, said that. And I'm like, yeah. you know, of all the people that are commenting, it's the men. The men are looking at the work. The men are wanting to buy the fruit. Usually it's the wife, right? Do you, do you know what, as soon as I saw these, I thought these were medieval babies. <laughs> I, I was thinking That would be of, fun, yeah. I was thinking of little knights. Mm -hmm. King of the round tail. That, that's what I'm seeing. That's exactly what was inside, but I couldn't articulate. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that, that baby lying in, a, in a, uh, a horse's manger somewhere. Like you found it in an old potting shed or something. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It it's was in the just, back of the barn under all the decayed layers. Yeah, it's just sleeping and waiting just for something. Someday. Yeah. Yeah. What a fun, that would be a fun story. Interesting. Yeah. That would be a really fun story. These little things that just hatch, where do they come from? <laughs> yeah, there's a movie there. Huh?